Today's video is going to teach you how to identify one of my favorite parts of the game, the dice. Please stick around. I'm AZ Mountaineer and this is our channel, Old School Rules, where we celebrate the community of old school gamers and grognards who like classic RPGs, miniatures, magazines, and everything goes with it. And today, the thing that goes with it is dice. Each episode of the What Is It Wednesday series helps you identify a particular item, whether it's something in your collection or something you're looking to purchase online from a friend or at the local uh, gaming store. And today we're taking a close look at the dice that came uh, with the various versions of the game. We'll start with the dice you could get uh, separately from TSR and then talk about the dice you that came in the box sets from the homes the mold bay and the cook, and then what we call the mincer Beckme version, as well as the dice that were sold separately by TSR. It's a really fun topic, one of my favorite things about the game are the dice, and I hope you'll enjoy today's video. So let's talk about dice. In particular, I'm trying to help you today identify if the dice you're looking at, first off, even were part of an original Dungeons & Dragons set, because there are lots of dice uh, that were made by third parties. And then if you do have Dungeons & Dragons, original TSR dice, uh, help you identify exactly what they were, what set they went with, and give you some sense of relative value. The uh, dice that came, the first dice that came actually produced by TSR looked like this. Uh, then they had some various different colors they used uh, in what they call the Moldve box set, and then the Mincer dice. And again, some different colors there. So first, let's take a step back. Um, as far as TSR is concerned, there were five different products that came with the Dungeons & Dragons game or that were sold directly by TSR as opposed to third parties. Then in terms of other companies, lots of other companies produced uh, dice at this, around this time period. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about those, but today's video is not going to help you identify those dice other than to let you know that they're not original TSR dice, that they're third party dice. The key details to understand whether you're looking at original Dungeons & Dragons dice or in what box set or you know that they went with, we look at the color, the shape, and the numbers. Very specifically, we look at some of the numbers on those dice. So before TSR included dice, they sold dice as a separate item from a company called Creative Publications. And here's a picture of what those dice looked like. You'd have a D4, a pink D6, a green D8, blue d12 and this white d20 you'll notice if you're a more recent gamer there's no d10 now all these numbers here are black but what they would tell you to do well there's two ways you could get a d10 result right one you could color one set of numbers on black and then use red probably here for the other set right so red zero uh, or sorry, one to zero would be one to ten and then your black uh, one would be 11 all the way up to black zero would be d20. The other way you could do it is take a different die like say your d6 1 to 3 you'd roll that 1 to 3 would be you know 1 to 10 if you got a 4 5 or 6 then that meant the number that was showing was either you know 11 to 20. So there's a couple of different ideas. So again for the Dungeons and Dragons wood grain box set or the white box these are the original rules you had creative publication dice. Here is the, if you got them separately, they would come in this little Ziploc bag, and here's what the symbol would look like, and then here's a picture of the dice in the bag. These are highly collectible, they're quite rare, uh, and they're definitely the most valuable dice, especially if you get a full set like this in a Ziploc bag. That's going to be the most valuable thing. I mean, absent Gary Gygax's original dice or something that has a personal tie to it, just generically speaking, this is the most valuable type of dice you can find. And again, if we're talking about things that are specific to TSR, if you're really into dice collecting, there are rarer dice, more valuable dice out there, but that's really a topic for people who are more expert on that who want to take a deep dive into the world of dice collecting. The next thing you had was uh, TSR put out something called the Holmes Box Set. And rather than, they saw that they were selling a lot of dice, and so rather than letting that money go uh, partially to the company Creative Publications. They contracted with the same company overseas. I believe that was in Hong Kong, but somewhere over there, uh, and got their own dice. If you notice, they sure do look very similar, right? 
yellow D4, orange D6, that's the key, the quickest way to tell the difference between a set. Um, there are slight differences, but only really sort of expert people are going to be able to notice the difference, for example, between a green D8 or a blue D12 or the white uh, D20. And here they are side by side, and you can see they're very, very similar. Unless you're really into dice collecting, you're probably not going to be able to notice any difference other than that pink versus orange D6. Okay, And again, Holmes dice, uh, they were not high quality. They tended to... Um, the corners tended to break down, especially on the dice D20 that you rolled all the time. And so they weren't, you know, at the time, great dice. A lot of people replaced them with better made dice. And so they weren't kept all that much. They're pretty valuable, um, but they aren't impossible to find. If you go on a sales site, gaming bookstore, eBay, or something like that, you can find Holmes dice if you're willing to pay. They're pretty expensive. Okay, so this is the Holmes box set. Uh, Holmes is the name of the gentleman who did the editing of the rule book. And Gary Gygax wanted to take all the different supplement booklets that were originally put out and try to create a basic game that was easier and more uh, coherent and clear for young gamers or new gamers uh, to get involved in the hobby and understand what the rules were. And if you got that box, then you would get this set of what we call the Holmes dice. They would be in a sealed, usually in a sealed plastic bag. And they came pre-inked, in other words, the colors already, the numbers already colored in like that. Here's the next product. It's actually not dice, right? It's called chits. Uh, but so the third thing that they did, and James Ward tells a great story about how it came that they actually ran out of dice at one point, like the, the, they, they ran out and the new production wasn't there to take over. Uh, and so what they did for a period of time was use these chits. So they would give you this card, heavy stock. You would punch these numbers out. You can see one to 20, one to four, one to six, one to eight, different colors there that you could use. I guess put in a hat or whatever and draw those out as a way to get random numbers instead of instead of rolling dice. So that's what you got in the box set for a period of time instead of uh, dice. So the next thing they had was called the uh, Moldve dice. And so this is what they look like. They came in, they came in different colors. Um, and we'll take a look at some different dice here in a minute. And one of the things, if you look closely, you can even see the swirly colors uh, here. They had some basic colors they used, brown, yellow, green, red, and blue. But the color is very inconsistent. And so you can even see here the D20 is different than the other dice. And if you look like at the D6, the D4, you can see some sort of, um, I call it a swirling pattern, where some residue from what was in there before is sort of mixed into, uh, into the numbers. This is the Moldve basic Dungeons & Dragons box set. Great cover art by uh, Errol Otis. And um, there was a rule book, and this came again, the sealed plastic bag. These came um, with the numbers not colored in, and you would get a, a crayon that you would use. You would scrub it across the number, and then you would wipe it, and then just the, the number would left being um, colored in. And then they had this expert rule set that went with it. We call it sometimes the cook box set, because the cook is the name of the gentleman who did the editing for the rule book there. Again, they came with what we, we just call Moldve uh, dice. Um, although there's a period towards the end of the, the run of production of these box sets where they were, apparently had run out of Moldve dice and they had a new type of dice they were using called Mincer. We'll talk about that in a second. And so sometimes you'd get Mincer dice in these boxes. So that can happen. In fact, my expert box set that I bought had Mincer style dice in it instead of Moldve style dice. So this box set and you would get you know, your set of six. These are blue, just to, by the way, blue is by far the most common color of, of Moldve dice, although the types of blue, all kinds of different shades. And so guys that I talk to who collect and try to put together sets, you know, might have dozens and dozens of different dice so they can try and do some color matching. Guys have helped me do that for my sets as well. Okay, so just generally, and again, knowing that the colors vary uh, from die to die and set to set. Here's, we have blue, brown, and you can see here again, they don't all match, yellow, green, and the green is usually a fairly unattractive color. Some people call it sort of like swamp green a dice. Uh, and then reds, and I particularly like red, so I've got lots of different color of red dice. You can see even here some variations. Here's some that are a little bit more pinky or bubblegummy. 
Uh, here you'll see the 20, 8, and 6 sided die are really rich red, and then the other ones are more of a pink. And then these are my original dice with a couple of substitutes um, that came along later. But they were a pink, and you can see like on that D20, a lot of swirling in there, just really unique uh, color. And that's why I like the Moldve dice the most, because all the dice are so sort of so unique. Then comes the uh, Mincer box set, and uh, Frank Mincer is the editor. They went back to redo th the rules. Some people call this the Beckme series because there were a basic expert um, uh, companion masters and immortals box sets, but they all had what we call Mincer dice. And there's a few differences. Um, some of them are very similar, but you can tell the difference, and I'll show you how here in just a moment. But they got better at making these dice because these tend to be nice, sharp, very clear uh, colors, very consistent. And so you get, um, and again, they came in a plastic bag with uh, crayon for, so you could color in your own numbers. And you would have red, orange, green, blue, and yellow. Those are the most um, common uh, colors to have. Okay, so this is what we call the Mincer box set. It was a red, red, or the, some people call it the red box. Uh, so it was a red box, and um, you would get, your dice would be in there again. You'd get six, right? D4, 6, 8, 10, uh, 12, and 20. And so here's a set of mine that are blue, and I actually picked up an extra D6. That's not how they came, right? It's just one of each. Here's an example of red. Uh, this is the ones that actually came in my expert set, but here you can see yellow, orange, and green colors of the Mincer dice. So how do we tell the difference? So here is a red uh, Mincer D6 and a brown Moldve D6. And so all the threes on the dice, you'll see the difference, right? In Moldve, it's a very curved three, and Mincer has that flat top for its three. On all the threes, right? So whether it's D4 all the way up to D20, the threes are always that style. That is probably far and away. If you know you have one or the other, that is far and away the quickest and easiest way to tell exactly what you have. The other thing you can do to tell the difference is look at the shapes. Um, probably the most obvious is this D8. You can see the mincer, which is at the bottom, sort of an elongated shape, whereas the Moldve D8 is a sort of squatter, uh, equilateral, equilateral, equilateral triangle. Um, and then the D10 is a little different. If you just sort of look back and forth, you can sort of see the Moldve, which is at the top, in addition to the rounded three, is just a little bit different shape than, than the Mincer dice. So here they are. These are the four, and I didn't put the chits up again, that's the fifth one, but these are the four types of dice. Originally they sold creative publications, which have that pink D6. Then they started making their own, which essentially were the same, which has the orange D6. Then you have Moldve dice, then you have Mincer dice. And so those are the dice that came in the box sets that you could buy from um, directly from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, from TSR, for Dungeons and Dragons. They also sold these boxes. These are called Dragon Dice. This is the, uh, these were Mincer style dice and they came like this. There were the different colors you could buy. You could just buy this at the local hobby store. They also did what they called the percentile sets and these are all just D10s. Um, in addition to using with Dungeons and Dragons, other games like Star Frontiers and Top Secret and stuff, I think, might have used these dice as well. So I, I mentioned to you that TSR, by far, is not the only one who made dice in this era. It was clearly a moneymaker, and lots of people got in on the action. Um, probably the, the first person to do that, and, and just a fantastic um, member of the hobby, is Lou Zoki. And Zoki had game science, and his boast was, I'm making the best dice of anybody on the market, right? They are more expensive than these dice, but if you looked at those pictures of my original mold by dice, they start to round off, right? The corners were soft and they would break down. Some people complained their D20 would basically turn into a ball that would just roll and it never would actually land on a particular number. So he used a better type of plastic in his dice. And he made all kinds of dice. He made dice of different sizes, all the way up to a D100. Um, and he's been a fantastic member of the gaming community forever. Other folks who early, in the early days who made dice, armory dice, their first generation used an A in place of the number one on their dice, it's very distinctive. Kaplow games, 
the Nice Dice Company, and Windmill Hobbies, which made dice that are sort of similar to game science, but there are some ways for collectors to sort of tell the difference between them. If you've enjoyed this video, I'll give you some information here about several of the sources I read through and making sure I had some, some good information, accurate facts, and so forth. Uh, there's a site called DiceCollector.com. A gentleman named Kevin C Cook uh, has that. He claims to have the, own the most dice in the world. He's got all kinds of fantastic information, uh, all kinds of manufacturers about dice. Uh, John Peterson, who wrote the book Playing at the World, has a blog on the internet and he has a couple articles including a YouTube video where he shows various early era dice including stuff that came before uh, I believe creative uh, publications set of polyhedral dice. There's a site called GM Dice, the ASEAM website which has all kinds of fantastic information about everything that has to do with early TSR products and then the other thing if you're really into dice there are great Facebook groups out there and that's how I've gotten connected with a number of people, including my friend Daniel Lawrence, who is the person I go to whenever I have questions about dice. He's all into the stuff. He knows all kinds of things about all kinds of dice, not just the ones I talked about today. Uh, but there are great collectors uh, pages out there on Facebook where you can find people who have a similar interest, if that's something you're interested in um, being involved in or something you want, just want to learn more about. So I encourage that. Not a huge fan of Facebook all the time, but there's some great things in the Facebook groups that you can get to uh, meet a bunch of wonderful people. So that's it for today's video, What is It Wednesday, all about TSR's Dungeons & Dragons dice. Uh, if you are enjoying the content we put out, feel free to subscribe. We try to put out content once or twice a week. Uh, and I hope you guys are having a great new year. Welcome to 2023. And until next time, my friends, keep rolling 20s.